George the Iceman Gervin, one of the greats of NBA history. He was nicknamed the Iceman for his cool play style and his demeanor on the court. George is the greatest San Antonio Spur that you rarely hear about. The Iceman was voted as one of the NBA's 50 greatest players of all time. He was a 6'7 wing who dominated the league offensively, and oftentimes it was with his iconic finger roll. He had a terrific basketball IQ and was known for his quality shot selection. Between his years in the ABA and the NBA, Gervin scored over 26,000 points while shooting over 50% for his career. When people talk about the greatest scorers of all time, who are the names that typically come up? From my experience, they usually say guys like Jordan, Kareem, Chamberlain, Durant, Kobe, and James Harden, and all of those are great names. But one of the names I almost never hear get mentioned in that group is the Iceman, George Gervin, and that is a crime because he definitely belongs in that group. Unfortunately, a lot of great scores of the 1970s are often overlooked, and there's an easy explanation for that. Great scores like George Gervin, Rick Barry, and Julius Irving spent some years in the NBA and some years in the ABA, but when people often bring up the all-time scoring list, it only accounts for NBA scoring, meaning all those buckets they got during the ABA years are essentially ignored, and these greats should be way higher on the list of all-time scoring leaders. So just how good was George Gervin really? Well, let's take it back to the beginning of his career as we travel through his progression and his accomplishments. In the year 1972, Gervin was scouted and signed by an ABA team, the Virginia Squires. As a 20-year-old, he had a decent rookie campaign as he averaged 14.1 points and 4.3 rebounds, but it wasn't until his second season that he truly broke out as a star. In his sophomore year in the ABA, he averaged 23.4 points, 8.4 rebounds, 1.4 steals, and 1.6 blocks on 47% shooting. As many of you know, the popularity of professional basketball in the 70s wasn't what it is today, and the Virginia Squires were one of the organizations struggling financially and they were trying desperately to stay afloat, so they traded their star in Gervin to the San Antonio Spurs for $228,000. It was there in San Antonio where Gervin would go on to build his legacy. In 1976, the NBA merged with the ABA, which moved Gervin Spurs to the NBA, and this is where he first started to accumulate his NBA statistics. This merger perfectly coincided with the beginning of his prime. During the prime of his career from 1977 to 1984, he averaged a remarkable 28.8 points, 4.9 rebounds, 3 assists, and 1.3 steals on 51% shooting. During this stretch, with his silky smooth style and his ability to finish around the rim with incredible precision, he led the league in scoring four times. In case you're not grasping just how impressive this is, let me put it this way. That's the third most scoring championships in NBA history. The only players with more scoring crowns than Gervin is Michael Jordan and Wilt Chamberlain. That's it. Among his noteworthy scoring performances was his final game of the regular season in 1978. George Gervin was heading into this day with a slight lead as the league leader in scoring over David Thompson, but then Thompson proceeded to drop 73 points in his final regular season game and took the scoring lead from Gervin. George was going to need to score 59 points that evening if he wanted to take the scoring crown back from Thompson. Turns out, he nearly did that by halftime. Gervin was so determined that he exploded for 33 points in the second quarter alone, which at the time was an NBA record. He dropped 53 points in the first half. He ended up with 63 points on only 33 minutes played, because that's all it took. The game was completely meaningless from a playoff seeding standpoint, so he sat out some of the third quarter and all of the fourth quarter. If he played those minutes, he definitely could have scored into the 80s or possibly even 90 point territory. That's how dangerous he could be when he got going. His best year overall came in the 79-80 season where he averaged 33.1 points per game while shooting 52.8% from the field. Other than Michael Jordan, no wing player in NBA history has ever averaged that many points while shooting above 50% from the field for the season. His best seasons were in the early 80s, where he led his Spurs to be contenders in the Western Conference. Unfortunately, he went down as one of the NBA greats who was never able to win a championship, and a big reason for that was simply because the timing was bad, considering the Lakers were in the middle of their dynasty run. Several times they ran into Kareem and Magic's Lakers in the Western Conference Finals, but they were never able to beat the juggernaut of Los Angeles. 
In the final year of his career, which was the 85-86 season, he was a member of the Chicago Bulls and a teammate of a young Michael Jordan. The team didn't live up to the hype as Jordan spent most of the season dealing with a broken foot and although George was still decently productive, he was well past his prime at this point. For the totality of his career, he was a 12-time All-Star, made 7 All-NBA teams, and 2 All-ABA teams. For his NBA career, he finished with averages of 26.1 points, 4.6 rebounds, 2.8 assists, and 1.2 steals on 51.1% shooting. Another incredible fact about his numbers is that other than LeBron James, he's the only wing player in NBA history to have a career average of over 25 points per game while shooting over 50% from the field for his career. Again, this is just another reason why it's completely asinine that this man almost never gets any attention when discussing the greatest scores of all time. So just how good was he? Well, he was never anything special defensively, so you can't say he's one of the greatest two-way players ever, but as far as just a pure score, you could make a legitimate argument that he's in the top five of all time. Let me know in the comments section where you rank the Iceman among the greatest scorers of NBA history. Thanks for watching as always, make sure to like and subscribe for more NBA content, and I'll see you guys in the next video.